How's it going my peeps? Welcome back to the channel. If you've been around here for any amount of time, you should know what this flannel and these decorations mean. This is the fifth year, the fifth installment of the Pumpkin Spice Month. These are some of my favorite videos to make and I think I've outdone myself this year. I won't even lie to you. To get things started today, I have developed an amazing spiced brioche loaf that we will turn into the most delicious pumpkin spice French toast with a whipped Bailey's topping. And as you should no, things are only gonna get more weird and wacky as the month goes on, so stay tuned for that. But buckle in for this year because we are going harder and bigger than ever before. Okay, if you are a real one and you wanna make everything from scratch, the spiked whipped cream and the homemade spiced brioche loaf, you're gonna to wanna to grab yourself some granulated sugar and bread flour, some AP flour and whole milk, heavy cream and half and half, kosher salt, some pumpkin cream liqueur, some vanilla bourbon, lots of eggs, brown sugar, powdered sugar, vanilla paste, pumpkin pie spice, active dry yeast and some butter. <coughs> Oh my god. I don't know if you can see, really, but I'm choking on the damn fog. <laughs> Let us begin with the bread. Now, I've made plenty of breads in the past. I think last year I even made a homemade spiced white bread. And that was good, especially for the purpose that I used it, like in a sandwich, but I want this to be like a real bakery style bread and is also the world's most perfect French toast bread. I've been developing this recipe for a couple of weeks now and I wanted it to be a cross between a brioche and a challah bread, since those are the two most widely used breads for French toast. And I'm pretty excited with the recipe that I landed on because I think I really nailed it. I adopted that super eggy richness from the challah with the very sweet and buttery savoriness of the brioche. I really think we got the best of both worlds here. At no point did I say this was a healthy bread recipe, but it's got close to four eggs. It's got an entire stick of butter, a half cup of sugar, all of these measurements will be written up down in the description. I can't encourage you guys enough to try it out because I am pretty proud of this one. I think it's probably the best recipe I've ever come up with. You have to beat the ever living heck out of it in a stand mixer to develop all that gluten. I use a balance of all purpose flour and a little bit of bread flour to encourage a little bit more structure than a super fluffy like pillowy brioche. It rises the first time in a greased bowl for about two hours at room temperature, and then you slice it up into three logs, braid them together, and let it rise one last time right in the bread pan. Of course, this is fine to eat alone. Eat it for toast, eat it as a snack with nothing on it because I think it's that good. But if you are like me or you've got it for more than a day or two, you can turn it into French toast by whipping up a quick custard. I am using some brown sugar, some half and half, a splash of vanilla bourbon. Again, all of these ingredients and measurements are down in the description. I recommend dipping each side of your bread in your custard for about five to 10 seconds per side, and then down in a very thoroughly buttered nonstick pan. These are gonna cook for about four to five minutes per side. You might laugh at me when I say this, but honestly, I might be a little more excited for this whipped topping that I thought of. I don't know if this has ever been done. I'm sure it has been by someone somewhere. But since Bailey's or any standard cream liqueur is just dairy cream, I figured you could whip it right up along with some heavy cream and it would make the perfect, like super boozy whipped topping. I definitely channeled my inner Rie here to try to figure out where I can slip in a little bit more alcohol in this one. But Bailey's, if you're watching, I can't find your pumpkin spice flavor anymore. If you discontinued it, I'm never speaking your name again. And if you didn't, tell me where I can get it because I couldn't find it anywhere this year. But finally, it is time to plate this guy up and give it a taste. You cannot forget a generous sprinkling of some more powdered sugar, a little bit more pumpkin pie spice, and some definitely real natural maple syrup, not that uh, artificial crap that I love. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, I present to you the ultimate pumpkin spice French toast, the first recipe in this year's October pumpkin spice madness. I am quite happy at the moment. I'm not just saying this because it's my recipe, but this is some of the best French toast I've ever had. 
the outside is super crisp and light. The inside is just so fluffy and moist and airy and delicious. And this cream is the perfect topping. It's not too sweet. And the whole thing is just so nicely balanced. I didn't drown it in the fake syrup because I wanted to actually taste everything else. So damn good. I could not have asked for a more perfect start to this month. Maybe I should just do all my videos out here the whole year. I kind of like having my little skellies on my shoulders. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. Uh, there's still one open slot uh, for a video this month. So if you have a good pumpkin spice idea, feel free to leave them down in the comments. DM me over on Instagram. Other than that though, have a fantastic week and I'll see you right back here next time. Peace. than ever before. This is Skelly. We're best friends. Does it make me look like a shrimp? Yes. <laughs>